Hello, welcome to our podcast. My name is Christopher Eden. Uh, Nate. And I'm Tony. And this is going to be our first, first recording. A um, bunch of geeks and nerds here, also Christ lovers. Yep. So, since this is our first time, we're going to basically be introducing ourselves, talk a little bit about ourselves, so you, know, you guys can get to know us before we start really getting deep down into... Uh, the geekiness that is us. You might hear yeah. some uh, kids in the background here. Um, so I'm a parent. Uh, so is my roommate here. So don't mind uh, don't mind them. Uh, Nathan, you want to go first? All right, sure. Um, where to start? I'm an avid gamer. I've been playing uh, mostly Nintendo-themed consoles and games and what have you since I was seven or eight years old something like that uh, i also write music uh i've been playing the trumpet for the better part of 12 years now um outside of that you know i don't have a whole lot just taking things easy and i'm waiting until i ship out for the navy real soon here oh yeah that's, that's oh. some big news right there that's, that's cool right. so where are you going uh basic is going to be in illinois I'm going to be there for about eight weeks, and then for the next year at the very least, I will be in Charleston, South Carolina, where they will teach me the theory and practical side of nuclear engineering. Wow. I'll say, because I don't think there's a lot of subs in Illinois. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's, if, uh, I know military intelligence is oxymoronic, but I would hope they'd have enough to keep them out of the most landlocked lakes you could possibly have in the states hmm. you know. all right tony well um i guess where to start um i am a grad student uh right now i'm at capital bible seminary i'm gonna be taking some time off just to regroup mentally and everything <laughs> um as far as which nerd hobbies I'm into, I like Natum into Nintendo. I've uh, been a huge Nintendo fan. Got the N64, GameCube, Wii. Probably older than I am, so probably did the Super NES and the NES and all that stuff. Yeah, I didn't I did. do that. Okay. That, oh, man, that stuff was fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll try to do the retro gaming thing eventually. Um, and then I'm a huge fan of animation. Am I still? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I've got my shameless... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle sleeved blanket because Snuggie's trademarked. Um, and so, like at um, at my undergrad, which was Maranatha Baptist University now in Watertown, Wisconsin, that was really where a lot of this stuff started to pick up because I learned a lot about theology and a lot mm. about philosophy. And yet, at at the same time, a friend of mine and me were like really getting into avatar the last airbender and so it's like this it's not a it is a kid's cartoon and i'm thankful that it's like not nasty like south park or anything mm -hmm. but it had some like deep mature themes to it oh absolutely and that struck me and then actually i watched cora first and then book three and then book two and then <laughs> I, haven't finished book one. I, I did it backwards that's um, but then I started watching the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because their marketing is brilliant. I mean, they got this, they got, <laughs> um, what don't they have? I saw like a garden shovel at Target, like a gardening spade Goodness gracious. with the turtles on it. And yeah, that's, that story was very serious as well. I was I don't know. Have Pretty you seen surprised. the original ones? The black and white? No, I haven't. Oh, oh. They were bloody. <laughs> they killed yeah. people. So, mm. no, that's, um, my introduction in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was the original stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They all I mean, were the red, right? Well, see, it's like, it was all black and white, and sometimes the only color in there was the blood. Mm. Um, but yeah, mostly it was just like black. But see, when then they brought out the original cartoon then, see, I had the blimp, and I, yeah. Gotcha. I had all that old original stuff. Like the stuff Nerd. you see on... Mm. You know, like the... Uh, That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope that... I would hope that being a, called a nerd on a geek podcast would be... Uh, <laughs> um, no, but it's like the stuff you... What is it? You see on... Uh, oh, 
what is that thing that Seth, Seth that show that Seth Green does? Robot Family chicken. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, Robot, Robot chicken. chicken. Yeah, no, like yeah. the the figurines that you see on there, the Ninja Turtles. Those are the original ones. Oh yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So that's the ones they have now are a little bit styled differently. A little more s- serious and silly at the same time. I don't know how they even do that. I like it. I like. I thought I would hate it just because it was CGI and anything CGI is too new for me. Mm-hmm. Like more of a traditionalist. But they pull it off really well. Mm-hmm. And I actually relate a lot to Michelangelo because I'm the short one. Mm. I'm the short one here. I'm um, the funny guy. And especially like earlier in life, I struggled a lot with like trying to impress everybody. Mm-hmm. Like he tries to impress his brothers all the time and he tries to make them not think of him as a goofball. And so I kind of identify with that. Uh, but at the same time, God's teaching me Stop comparing yourself to people and just serve me. Serve me the way that I made you to serve me. So That's right a on. good lesson. So origin story for me. Um I actually so I met this gentleman here at my church. Um met this gentleman at my Bible study, BSF. So mm. uh that's Bible study fellowship. Yeah. International. International. That's right. Yes. Huh. Um, but my introduction into the geek and nerd world was a little bit older than y'all. Um, my first system, if you will, was actually a Commodore 128. Wow. Okay. That's actually the monitor right there Sweet. from that old machine. Um, <laughs> you know, I played things like, um, oh, what was it? It was um, Bruce Lee. Mm. They had a Bruce Lee game for that. Oh, s- s- tiny pixels. We also had an Atari. Yep. Atari 7800. I still have that thing right over there, too. Oh, the 78, not the 26? No, 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 the 7800. Okay. So we have a, a, a bunch of, like, the newer style games. Like, just as it was kind of phasing out, they had the really oh, okay. nice ones. Like, um, there was one that was, like, all about... Oh, des- it was Desert... Desert Eagle or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's like a top-down um, eagle in in the Egyptian desert, and you had to put together different Egyptian symbols mm-hmm. to get different powers. Oh, that's cool. Wait, you mean that was a plane? I always thought that was a tank. No, 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 no. It was a bird. Oh God, it wasn't even a plane. <laughs> oh my, that's even worse. No, because you had you could actually go up and down to get around enemies and whatnot. You could fly really low to the ground, and your shadow would actually tell you how close you were to the ground. Maybe that's why I never won. Maybe. <laughs> Whoops. So, um, no, I then graduated on to PCs and uh, the Genesis. Mm. So, uh, so, yeah, the Sega Genesis was mine. And then I actually skipped consoles all the way until I got to the 360. Okay. <laughs> um, but, see, I was in it. I was into gaming in, like, the golden era of PC games. Oh, yeah. Back when LucasArts was making all the... Uh, mm original intellectual property, Secret of Monkey Island, Loom, games like that, Grim Fandango. Um, but see, my nerddom uh, extends far beyond even video games. I, I play, actually, I, just today I was at a role-playing game group mm, playing sweet. some old first edition D&D. Wow. Uh, AD&D, technically. Um, so That's Dungeons and Dragons. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... Can't believe you never told me that, jerk. What? The, there's a meet. It's a meetup group <sighs> online. <sighs> Everything's online. Yeah, you need to get there. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> um, Wait. But, so this wasn't in person. This was. No, no. Well, no. The meetup. So online. It's a meetup.com. It's used oh, okay. to get people in person. Mm, they coordinate gotcha. them online. So you're mm. there. Then they go, hey, we're going to coordinate to do this thing. There. Like I have a meetup for filmmakers, mm. uh, which I haven't done anything with for a while, but. Um, oh well but (laughs) so yeah role playing games collectible card games I got into Magic the Gathering back when it was one of the only few card games that existed long before Pokemon existed you mean there was something before Pokemon existed no 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 no. that's all lies (laughs) <laughs> it was Pokemon first, then hey, everything else. If, if if it was not for Richard Garfield and Magic, <laughs> no other card games would exist right now. You would not have Pokemon. My mind is blown. <laughs> I refuse to believe this. 
Oh, well, I still have the article where Richard Garfield proposed to his wife using custom-made magic cards. Oh, that's sweet. That's amusing. That's Slightly cool. jealous. Yeah. yeah, right? Well, you know, you own the company, right? Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> you're flanked by... Oh. You're flanked by two Nintendo guys, so if you, like, try to diss any of this stuff... <laughs> you know, I just... I, if I ever wanted Nintendo, I'd go to a friend's house. That's about mm-hmm. the only thing I would do. I, so I played it very, very casually. Like, I could never get beyond, like, maybe two scenes of uh, of Zelda, just because, you know, I didn't mm-hmm. own it, so I couldn't spend any time with it. Gotcha. Um, so my experience more was with, uh, I guess, a little bit of um, Rainbow Road. Mario Kart. Mario Kart, things like that. 64? Um, the Super Nintendo is where I started. Oh, okay. And then 64 later on. Yeah. But, no, I remember when Star Fox first came out. Mm. The very, very first one. Star Fox is down. No! <laughs> um, see, I'm, I'm the old person here. I'm the old. It's okay. We won't look down on you because you're old. Yeah. So, in, so y'all have been... Christian, what, your entire lives kind of thing, or? Uh, that one's a funny story. I tell this to just about everybody. Um, I grew up in a Christian household, but I did not know... It's very strong but there. But I did not know what it meant to be a disciple of Christ until about my senior year of high school. That's when everything kind of clicked for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, until then, I, I, I would see my peers, especially in middle school, they would... Uh, the ones that proclaimed Christ, they looked like it even felt like they had something new, something I didn't. I, I couldn't understand that, so I began to play a game of intellectual keep-up. Intellectually, I was there. I beat some of them into the dirt. Spiritually, I was crippled beyond all belief. Mm. And uh, senior year, Spirit revealed to me that Faith is not a case of works. It's not something I can pick up from solely the book. Faith is a gift given to us, and salvation comes with that faith. And until Mm -hmm. we learn to accept it, that's it. Mm -hmm. It, It's it's moot. Mm -hmm. So what about you? Um, I have a similar story. Raised in a Christian home. Um, mine's a little bit more complicated because I don't know exactly when I trusted Christ as my savior. I remember making a profession of faith at age six and it was at an evangelist meeting and the revival and everything. And my parents said they saw a turnaround in me. They saw the change that comes with being a believer. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old is gone. The new has come. Mm -hmm. Um, then in middle school, I went through like a bad phase and I just remember, I remember my mom telling me or asking me if I was even saved. And I got sure again, um, which I hear lots of stories about people making professions at an early age and then getting sure. But maybe they get sure like once or twice. After my dad passed away uh, when I was 16, I was getting sure like 50 times a day. Mm. <laughs> I was praying the sinner's prayer and what what have you, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, and God just revealed to me just the, to focus on what Christ has done for me and not what I do. Mm-hmm. And that's really when it clicked. And obviously there is fruit that follows that. But for me, I, I needed to focus on the grace. I needed to focus on you cannot earn your salvation no matter how holy you try to be. You mm-hmm. can't, you can't get God to like you. Mm. He, he chose you and he bought you with Christ's blood. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So. I see. Um, so, I mean, but it's been something y'all have, I'm guessing, been exposed to for a, actively for a very long time. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Immersed okay. in, literally, because I'm a Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, so with me... I guess I guess I'm showing my difference here again. Um, I had, I mean, technically, um, believing parents have. They're not dead. Um, but they weren't active at the time. They're might I guess the term is asleep. Mm. Um, so we never we didn't go to church, didn't really have any experience, not really talk about it or mm-hmm. anything like that. We just 
had family time. I mean, Sundays were always fun because there was family time. We were always home. Mom always cooked brunch. Uh, it was the one time we had like a hot breakfast-ish meal. Um, so it was very family-oriented. So I guess I have that as my, like, you know, as my as my grounding base in that sense, as mm-hmm. opposed to going to going to church. But I spent my life as an agnostic, um, all the way up to about two and a half years ago. It's actually when I came to Christ mm. um, with the family at uh, our church. So um, through a lot of uh, questionable experiences, especially through my young adult years, um, that's why I have a son. So, um, and six years, uh, six and a half years old now. Um, mm. Absolutely love him. But uh, definitely was a uh, colorful, colorful past. Mm. Um, I spent most of my time thinking Christianity was this hokey nonsense of people who were holier than thou. I basically, I, I, I based my understanding of Christianity from media, um, mm-hmm. from the projections of uh, Catholicism yeah. and from a lot of social Christians, mm. the people who said, yes, I'm Christian, but didn't reflect that life. Yeah. Um, they did it because, you know, that's what they were brought up in, in the sense, so it's like, that's what you did. You went through all the motions, but you did, a, you, there was no... Fruit? Uh, yeah, there was no fruit. Um, you didn't... You didn't see, and he's like, "Okay, you want to do something? They just do it." There was no, "Okay, I don't, I don't want to do these things." No, they're just like, "Uh, oh. they either do it and go, well, I probably shouldn't have, but I'm going to do it anyway." Or mm-hmm. there's the whole, there's just a lack of desire. Uh, and that's the thing, a desire to please God. That's the proof that you're a believer, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as opposed to following some sort of dogmatic ritual. Yeah. That was my experience with other Christians for the most part growing up. So I, I, thinking that's what it was, I wanted to stay as far away from that as possible. Mm. Um, and it took this family, you know, kind of setting me down to uh, explain everything out. Um, I mean, I was like, la, 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 to most of <laughs> everything all my life. Um, in fact, I had a friend... Um, who really tried to push it on me. And the more you try to push it on me, the more I'm going to cover my ears and go, no, no, no. Uh, (laughs) So, um, but in this instance, I will admit that um, I had motivation. There was something that I wanted from the family at that time. But... So it's kind of like one of those, okay, if I, if I wanted to get what I want, I need to listen. But then I actually started listening. Mm. And I found the truth I was not expecting to hear. Yeah. It's so neat how God draws you when you least expect it. Almost. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That last thing I expected. You don't expect to go on a camping trip and go, okay, I'm just going to go on a camping trip. And you meet someone that. Com- leads you to something that's going to completely change your life. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so okay, I actually want to hear a little bit more about this. Um, were y'all aware of the Nintendo versus Genesis fighting? Oh yes. Of the time. Yeah. Yeah. I came late, and I still knew Mario and Sonic were out for blood. <laughs> uh, okay. Man. Apparently they still are. Um, my son, who loves Sonic, mm-hmm. uh, apparently he has a friend. I think it was at BSF. In in because oh, he teaches uh, in the kids' class where Wesley is. My oh, son. Yes. Okay. Uh, isn't there a kid here who likes who likes Mario? There was a kid that liked Pokemon. I knew that, and I'm sure there was a kid that liked Mario because lots of kids like Mario. Yeah, I was, I was pretty sure Wesley was talking about having like <clears throat> competitions and races with Mario. <laughs> Well, I mean, like but that. it's friendly now. They well, yeah, go to no. the Olympics together, and the Olympics is all about cheer and goodwill and countries loving each other, but also competing to beat the crap out of each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, m- malarkey, goodwill. The Olympics is out for blood. <laughs> Michael oh. Phelps is my hero, by the way. Mm. Yeah, but you know the uh, 
the Allot monster can outswim the <laughs> Oh, of course. Everyone knows this. Yeah. Oh. No. That um, doesn't sound good. No, it's probably not. But um <laughs> So, no, no, it's uh so actually can you do, you do you Okay, actually I'm I'm curious cuz I'm never around him. Uh maybe you can tell me or tell us uh, Wesley's little thing with with Sonic and what they do with I, the whiteboard there. They just draw on the whiteboard and they're competing for space on the whiteboard. There's no real like <laughs> designation of real estate on there. So you have the one kid who like draws a line from top to bottom and they're like, this side is mine. You can't have it. <laughs> and you can't have it. And then Wesley comes over and he starts drawing and then the other kid's like, hey, how dare you enter into my space or whatever. And, but, I mean, I really didn't pay that much attention. <laughs> I was too busy. I, I was too busy off on the side, like, healing, recovering from the class. Because, I mean, they're they're good kids, but they're a little rowdy. Yeah. So, that was just finally catching my breath. <laughs> now I have to stick my foot. I'm, I'm short. So. That's okay. My other You're leg, in good company. My, my other leg had fallen asleep. Mm. Well, apparently, this thing doesn't go down any further. So, <laughs> otherwise, I should stare at you like this. Short people problems. I don't know them. Uh huh. Well, you were gonna know tall people problems in your submarine. Yeah, yeah. No, I know no, tall people problems now. I used to work at a Wawa uh, before I entered voluntary unemployment. <laughs> <laughs> before I ship out, um, they would call me a lot to go find. So just, hey, Nate, Nate, Nate. Go get this thing. I'm like, okay, sure. And I'm looking at all the bottom <laughs> shelves. <laughs> I'm looking at all the bottom shelves thinking, you know, these are short people asking me to get something. No, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the tall shelves because these are short people asking the tall man, hey, go find the box of coffee cups. Sweet digs. No. No, I look over all the top shelves. I get a ladder. I'm scrounging at the very tippy top. Are they up here? Are they up here? And someone else walks in and says, Nate, they're at the bottom. Wow. And I just about flipped out, jumped off my stepladder, and threw it out the nearest window um, because that happens all the time. <laughs> Call the tall man. To get the box at the bottom of the floor that he has to bend over onto his belly. First world problems. I can see that woman <laughs> weeping, mm -hmm. sobbing. It's, it's just the first world, man. It's tall people. <laughs> no, but how, I still don't understand how you're going to get by on that submarine, though. Um, my uncle actually uh, just retired a few years back. He was a nuclear engineer as well. He served on subs, the small little fast attack ones, and he has a good six seven inches on me in height. Mm. He was a little cramped. I, <laughs> Only a little. Mm. I thought they didn't allow people over like six feet or something. Is that like old news or something? Or was he on one of the bigger soaps? Now I don't remember. Um, hmm. You know what? I think he was on one of the bigger soaps because when he was gone, he was gone. No one heard from him again until his uh, deployment ended. And he came back. So there's people that sunk to the bottom and just stayed there. Oh, no. Um, there would be things on the news, something big and fancy, like, ah, uh, just kicks and giggles. Finding out about one of, what is his name? I don't remember now. Hussein. No, oh, yes? okay. Yeah. Saddam. One, Saddam. Finding one of Saddam Hussein's many hundreds of thousands of hiding spots. Hmm. Um, that would be all over the news, and my uncle would be coming home, and it's like, oh, hey, hey, I was just there. <laughs> nice. And that's when we found out that his sub was a reconnaissance sub. Mm. Shh, by the way, uh, you don't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> just between, it's just between the three of us and the internet. <laughs> the entire world... Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So is it so is for y'all is it just uh video games or um games, anime, manga, yeah, music. That's right, anime. Yeah. yeah. Same here, video games, 
uh, anime, not so much manga yet. I'm trying to get a collection Ooh. going. Um, that is a very expensive mm. habit. I will forewarn you now. Yeah. I do have a set of Mega Tokyo, like the first four books. I think I got, I was at Goodwill and I got The Legend Ooh. of Zelda, um, the Minish Cap <sighs> manga. I just got the box set showed to my door set not too long ago. What is it? The uh, the Zelda box set for the manga. Mm. Oh, that's cool. And then I actually found this rare, I, I guess it was a rare gem. It wouldn't sell for anything because it was like all tattered and everything. Mm. But it's called Cinemanga. And Tokyo Pop would take screenshots of anime and apparently cartoons and live action also, which, I mean, that's not real manga. But they would take screenshots of anime and then they put like comic bubbles on them. Huh. And so then I started looking into it. Yeah, they've got some for like SpongeBob and Disney. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you can't call that manga. But I want to get it just because of like the irony of it. But then they have it for Avatar also. Hmm. The TV show, not the movie. <laughs> and that to me, I mean, that's practically the closest thing to anime that America's ever produced. I don't, so, I mean, what about uh, Voltron? Voltron actually... Was that oh, American? That was not American. Was it not? It was... Oh, see. Power of the internet. Yeah. But basically, it, it was like Robotech, where they took a Japanese show, completely changed the script around, mm -hmm. made it American. Um, but I forget. It's like Go Lion or something in Japan. Oh, is that? Yeah. Hmm. See, that was like my first anime ever was Voltron back when it originally came out. And see, I saw it on Toonami growing up. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> now, that was probably, what, oh, secondary Toonami. release? Yeah, something like that. I saw all I didn't of, have cable, so. I saw all of the anime first time around on Toonami. Mm -hmm. So that holds a special place in my heart. Um, oh, what about uh, original um, Thundercats? Yep. Thundercats. When, when I wasn't afraid of it. <laughs> <laughs> No, but is that is that American though? Um, Does that count as anime? I believe that was American. Uh, you can actually take a look at the different artist styles. Mm -hmm. The Japanese anime, uh, the the. Oh wait, no, that was Rankin Bass who did that because Ooh. they're the same people that it did, did the Hobbit. Hobbit and Return of the King. Right. Mm. Yeah, yep. but with, with like that older uh, line division well, between Japanese and American animation, the. Japanese favored completely different eye styles. It was yeah. It was so cartoony. American animation made everything realistic as yeah. realistic as possible. Uh, Bugs Bunny show where um, Bugs was playing Chopin or something like that. I don't remember. God help me if I'm wrong on that one. I will hang up my musicality now. Um, <laughs> but if you sat there and took a look at the cartoon character's hands, he he was playing. Mm -hmm. the actual music note for note it was so wow. accurate they won uh, an award on that for best animation or something like that mm -hmm. now but see i think when it when it comes to anime there's also two different types there's simplistic and complicated mm -hmm. because and you see that in in japanese anime they have this like sometimes they'll even cut to it it's almost like what they do with uh spongebob and ren stimpy when they come in for the close-up and they get just grossly detailed mm -hmm. but the anime has uh there's some that are fully like that like the rankin bass who like when they did uh the hobbit and whatnot mm -hmm. they had like 50 million lines just for their eye furrowed eye you know, and brows the ugliest things i've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> But Jam yeah, I've seen anime have that too. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some I forget what it was because I saw it when I was in high school. But some sort of fantasy anime that was like I would call it a complicated, an um, hmm. complex anime sort of thing. If you want a good example of both, check out Odin Host Club. Um, it, it very comedic. Uh, goodness Host gracious, Club. Host Club. Oh yes, it's a uh, reverse. Harem kind of thing. No, no, it's not no. See, there's host and hostess club. Um, <laughs> but the one of the male leads in the show, Tamaki, I love him to death. He is hysterical, and within his character arcs alone, you can see both styles of animation in many episodes in one go. It would there would be an episode where he's just in the corner. Uh, chibified, which for those of you who don't know, a chibi is taking a character, making it small and adorable. Love chibi. What with little, uh, isn't it kind of basically like a, 
uh, what is it, the stars. Basically, kind of looks like a star. Almost, you got the yeah. head and you got the kind limbs, of. and they come out in points. Yeah. Um, it's a starfish. I can pull it up. Like starfish. There like you go. this chibi. Right there. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Or there. Yeah. <laughs> they okay. don't have noses. But kind of like Krillin. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Krillin. Except all the time. And um, nowhere near quack? as competent. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? And nowhere near as competent. Yeah. Um, but, so Tamaki would be... Majestic space duck. <laughs> anyway Tamaki would be sitting in the corner all chibified whining and moping because the female lead Haruhi is not paying any attention to him boohoo such is life um, and then five panels later you now have this extremely masculine face muscle ripped everywhere and his voice gets very deep and rich and serious and it, so much detail in that face it's funny it well, you know hurts. kinichi does that too yeah that kind like, of sounds like the titans like the design for the titans hmm. like the creepy realism and the uncanny valley oh yeah were you talking about like attack on titan yeah attack on titan oh, okay that's kind of been my most recent thing um yeah, I haven't watched any. I watched the um, when uh, f- what is it? A uh, Team Four Star did Attack on Titan: A Bridge. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> now, have you seen the their version of a bri- of, of they did what they're working on a second episode? But was that the I one can- where it's like the, the happy times at summer camp and then everybody's getting slaughtered? Yeah. Okay. I can't take that seriously. I can't get past the first five. I, I love Attack on Titan. I've been reading the manga before it was cool. <clears throat> hipster. <laughs> it's okay. I'm an Inuyasha hipster. I was watching it before it came to America. Wow. <sighs> wow. I read the manga before the anime came out, but only because one of my friends showed me. So Nice. I'm only semi-hipster. Man, I'm so underground. You You're shot? over it. <laughs> okay. I think I, think I, think I stole that China. from all grown up. I don't know. I was I was thinking of something. Yeah, it'll bite me later. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Hmm. Now talking yet? about oh sorry. No, I was just saying it's like <laughs> trying to catch uh, the more unknown ones. Like uh, I don't know if y'all ever saw Flame of Rekka. Isn't that the one that you tell me about all the time that I need to see and I still haven't seen the the where he's a ninja? Yeah. Yes, and the elemental weapons. Yeah. <gasps> it's so intense. Mm. Have you guys heard of uh, Dragon Knights? Nope. I no. don't know if they ever done an anime adaptation for it yet. It's still just manga. Oh, which okay, that's probably why. I think is terrible. Twenty six volumes of delicious goodness. The storyline very compelling, um, very silly, but uh, serious art style. No, hmm. no, I will tell you a tragedy. Casino Stigma. Oh, don't play with my heart. Oh yeah, the fact that the the author is dead. <laughs> There is no more, no mm-hmm. even possibility of more. Not even more manga. He's it's just shake and pick it up. I have dreams. Uh, yeah, we'll see about I that. I was gonna say like they would. I mean, I know it's like Charles Schultz. He said nobody else can do peanuts. Is it like that with this guy? Well, it's not that nobody else can do it. It's just the fact that you know it's his story. So True. he only knew where it was going, and it only made it like what two seasons, or was it only one? It was um. Only the one, I think. Yeah. There, there's like about 26 episodes, so it might have been two seasons split up. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm not 100% on that. You I know, have to check. At least with uh, Kenichi, so after the second season, they've been doing they they finished up the arc from the manga for the first part, but then they're, they've been doing the OVAs that picked up after the disillusion of uh, of the dojo that they were at. Mm, okay. Mm. Was it Ryo Zanpaku or something? But, uh, no, here's, okay, here's another one that actually the voice for Inuyasha was a guest star in, uh, Angelic Lair. Nope. It's actually, um, it's, it's definitely more, uh, gender neutral in, in its, uh, appeal because not only do you have the fighting aspect, but it is, the main character is a female who basically gets a doll and it's this whole thing where they have these dolls that you can customize and fight each other. They're about, you know... What six inches tall, and they they throw them into the this arena. And when they enter the arena, they actually animate, you know, connecting to your head to your brain. Hmm. Huh. 
So um, a lot of the reaction time abilities, not only the the uh, the the robot doll itself, but also your ability to you know neurally link to. Hmm. Um, but of course, it's also got that whole oh, I style my, I can outfit my 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 uh, my doll, my angel yeah. as I want to. Um, my NT warrior, exactly, Mega Man. Sorry. <laughs> that, that actually sounds a lot like this very creepy Japanese game that I found about. Or, uh, heard creepy about. Creepy Japanese game? No way. Man. <laughs> Tell us man, more. Man, no. It's not funny. All right. Here's, it's, um, it's hide and seek for yourself. Hide and seek for the solitary. All right. There is your first problem. What? Slender um, was made in America. Oh, no, 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 no. This is like old as butts. That's pretty old. Oh, yes. My butt <laughs> With, is pretty um, old. How it's no played comment. is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> um, how it's played is you get, you get a doll. Mm-hmm. You get a doll. You fill this doll with rice and um, a little bit of your hair. Okay, already starting to get weird. Yes. And you do this small little ritual something like that and you have to take the doll to a source of water this is played in your house by the way a source it of water highly recommended you do it at home you have somebody outside waiting for you wait is this a computer game or a real life game? it's a real life game and you call a priest and if you can't get a priest have a lot of kerosene on hand this this is where it gets serious you have the doll you put it down somewhere and you take like safety pin for the love of god use a safety pin you jag the doll and say tag you're it then you go hide somewhere and that's something else that you Why need to safety pin specifically because if you use a knife you'll die I, I, I'll exp- i'm getting there um so you go and hide while you're hiding you have a cup of salt water warm salt water and you just keep it in your mouth i'll just have rock this salt. will <laughs> salt water this will hide your presence from the spirit. Do not drink it. You will need this to end the game. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you keep the salt water in your mouth and you just hide. And the doll will move. What? It'll get up. It'll no. move. It'll hunt you down. It, it's a ritual that summons a demon to possess the doll. You're essentially cursing yourself with this. So That's we're why. talking about this on a Christian podcast. <laughs> Well, like it's, it's Japanese. What it's do you Japanese. expect? Yeah. It's Japanese. I'm, don't do this, kids. Really don't. That's the spiritual realm is a real thing. Messing with this is a terrible idea. That aside, this is why you need the priest. That aside, so you're hiding, and the, the way the game ends is you have to let the doll tag you, Was and then you spit you the water it? on it. Yeah. No. Mm, yeah. No. No. Yeah. 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 No. Um, if you mess it up, you don't completely follow through with the thing. The demon, the demon gets very upset with you, and will try and kill you. And the only way to take care of everything is to either burn down the house, make sure that the doll is inside, or have the priest come in and exercise it. There, you can look it up online. I wish I could remember the actual name of the game. No. That's, that's, yeah, we don't but, want people trying to find this. Yeah, this is Creeper. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, one of my sisters was telling me about that. Going and on here. Ringu. Ringu. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Seven days. No. no. I used to mess with people, though. Uh, I found in the original, they don't have it on the Blu-ray, but in hmm. the original DVD version of uh, The Ring, there was a, you know, here you can select through the settings to, to either play or find chapters or whatnot. You keep mm-hmm. going, though, it goes, and it all of a sudden, the selector disappears. Um, so if you're not paying attention, you won't see that, though. Uh, but if you select while it's not on the screen, it's basically selecting something off screen, it will play the video. Oh, oh God. So what you do is that you, you, you select it when they aren't looking, and then all of a sudden the video starts with people sitting there. And at the very end of the video, it goes back to the menu. Mm-mm, it's mm. not the menu. Because it rings. And then it goes back to the menu. So it makes it seem like it's gone back to the menu, and then you hear a ringing noise. 
Oh, that's, yeah, that's it's horrific. basically trolling people. That's the stuff of nightmares right there. Yeah. <laughs> and see, what's even better is I had this. Um, I had one of these uh, CD holders that had the water in it with the little balls, and it would bubble. And um, it had a, a a light like one of those halogen lights with a color wheel. Mm-hmm. That and so it would cast this kind of watery color changing tone you know how it hit the color changing in the ring how did that kind of change i never saw the ring okay you need to see it because it's really good i don't I'm like a sheltered homeschooler no, i don't like horror i enjoyed this for simply for the uh the mystery mm-hmm. you know um the learning the mystery mm-hmm. and, and doing the whole investigatory um now i have seen the ring in 30 seconds with bunnies okay no 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 it is no, it's this, it's it's the <laughs> it's the suspense though. It's it's just how and there's so much like negative space to the movie mm. that it really kind of gets you. But um, but yeah, having this so no lights at nighttime. You have this uh, you have this watery bubbly color just kind of slowly changing no, against the no, wall no. as you're watching this thing, no. and then you hit you turn on the 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 full uncut video from you know that from the VHS tape. Yeah, it's good times. <laughs> Diabolical. Yeah, well, that's the whole idea. I was, I was, I, I, I enjoy. I even had this idea of creating my own version of a video and finding it, like putting it on a VHS and going, "Dude, I found the real video." It's why <laughs> I never, went, I never went through with it, but that would have been so awesome. Make it for a good video. Oh yeah, like a YouTube acting thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's like. Have you? I mean, have you seen that thing? So I have things like they have the finger just by itself twitching, or like the maggots that turn into people. Ew, ew, ew. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like I said, sheltered homeschoolers, sunshine and rainbows. Okay. <laughs> Man, let's let's get off of this track. We were talking I start. about. See, this is how we all know, <laughs> we know that we're all ADHD. Now, <laughs> I can joke about that because I've actually been diagnosed. I don't know about y'all. Me. Yeah. Okay. So. We were talking about Mario and Sonic. <laughs> oh, God. And we got to maggots turning into people. The ring. Which, I have to point out something. Even though there were all the wars then, um, have you guys seen the thing? It's a clone console. You can play Nintendo games, Super Nintendo games, and Sega Genesis. Yeah. To me, like because I didn't get any of those i want it (laughs) and there's a there's a game store nearby that sells um sells like retro games which Mm. i mean you never get that anymore uh power gamer oh so you're talking about doing uh like roms on there no not roms they play um, the actual cartridges yeah yeah really like it'll it has all the cartridge plugins yeah it's called the the one i know is the retron Mm -hmm. 3 and then there's the retron 5 which is Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Famicom, because apparently the Japanese NES carts were shaped differently, hmm. and Game Boy. Oh, so it didn't have uh, Sega Master System? No. Oh. But it plugs into your TV via HDMI. Ooh. Nice. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 16 so, um, bit and high def. Yeah. And apparently yeah. it runs on Android. <laughs> and. It's like super fancy and like it'll it'll allow you to like play the game at double the speed but without a ROM. So you're doing it totally legally because mm. the patents are expired. Right. Well, no, there's a lot of um they have a there's a website out there for games who are patents expired, you can't you can download the full game. Mm. Um I think it's something like a band I don't know. Don't ask me because um a band or I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Something like that. If because it, if it's not if it hasn't expired, you have it has a place where you can buy it. Mm, you can buy the games. That's all cool. these really old games, mm-hmm. abandoned Oni or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. something has neat. abandoned in the world. Do they do they do um some of the more recent stuff like the N sixty four and what have you? I think so. Are, are that, any of the N sixty four games expired though? Some of I them see. might be. Some of them don't actually have a. Uh, that totally disclosed thing. patent. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. um. A website that I used to go to until I found others called Cool Roms. Cool oh, Roms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They would they had a bunch of stuff on there, but if it was copyrighted, they would tell you, say, "Hey, this is copyrighted. Enjoy the images, 
but you're not getting the ROM from us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's kind of like um, so you and I were on, uh, or I was on the Kickstarter for, and you got uh, the Ouya. Ouya. Oh boy. <laughs> And so, and I have it right over there. Mm. Uh, but yeah, you can have the ability to play ROMs on them. They have they can make yeah. all the emulators all the way from like the early stuff up on there. And so you're able and to play. And that was a selling point. <laughs> well, yeah, that was the whole that. idea because they built it on the Android uh, platform. Right, but I'm saying like you're you're basing an entire selling point of your system on something that's technically illegal. <laughs> well, no, I mean they had the whole idea so that you could. Do that if you wanted to, and you can make all these all these apps and all these games for it because they didn't have all the restrictions for making games the way that Xbox and PlayStation mm. and do. There's all these um, to get the license to make something. You got to pay them big buku bucks. So it's like most of the people yeah. that can only uh, afford um, were like the mega gamers, and they've kind of just subtly started opening up uh, these indie, indie games. Developers, but even yeah. then, they still have you know they still have to shell out. Oh yeah. Whereas Ouya is like, yeah, make games, do whatever. It's like, um, like the time around the Ataris and things like that, where people mm-hmm. just make games. There was, I have a junk full of games for the Atari simply because there wasn't that huge, mm-hmm. you know, restrictions. So to, the seventy eight hundred, did they play twenty six hundred yes. games also? So do you have Pac Man? Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> oh, I have Miss Pac Man too. <laughs> yeah, because Miss Pac Man, I heard was actually good. My dad had the Atari and he had Pac Man. And at the time, I didn't know it was horrible. I just thought it was fun. <laughs> now it has, um, I even have Pong and Andro- uh, Asteroids and all that stuff. Hmm. My favorite uh, was probably Pitfall. That was the hmm. one I played the most. But I'll tell you what, people talk about games being you know hard or easy nowadays. Try playing the Atari version of Indiana Jones. It was all a few pixels, and you're like, what's going on? There was no direction. You don't know what's going on. Um, sometimes your your character would disappear between behind this like wall of pixels, and you're like, apparently my character is moving behind this wall, but I have absolutely no idea where he is, and I have to watch out for the snake that's going to bite me and kill me. Wow. I, I don't know what's going on. Where am I supposed to go? And then at some point you start falling, and I don't know how I'm supposed to stop myself from falling or not die when I reach the bottom. Mm. There's no direction. On that one, I have to say you should try the original Zeldas, both released for the uh, NES. No direction. You, it's literally... You can see everything, you, though. You can see everything, but you have no idea what you're supposed to do. The game manual sits there and says, Oh, the Dark Lord Ganon has come. You gotta say, collect the Triforce well, and stop and him from taking over. It, that's it, how all games were back then, though. For the most part... Every all games mm-hmm. would just drop you in the world like uh, Minecraft originally was, where you had absolutely no idea why you were there or that you were suddenly punching trees to get wood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Good memories. <laughs> yeah. So really, but... I don't know. I like that analogy a lot. Just you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, 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 the kicker is so. Uh, again, a lot of the other NES games, they, they would give you a little bit more of a heads up. They would tell you what the overall goal is, how you can go about to accomplish it, give you some sense of direction of where to go. Zelda, it's literally, here you go. Oh, okay, well, I'm just going to go wander over to the next screen. Oh, God, I'm dead. Yeah. But you know what that was? So you would call the 1-900 number <laughs> to get I the remember Nintendo those. Power hotline I remember to those. say, help me with this, just like they did in that movie, The Wizard. Dang it. It's genius marketing. It is. And to this day... Dang it, Bobby. <laughs> And to this day, Nintendo still messes with my head, and yet I still love them. Oh, of course. Nintendo was there for me when others were not. Hmm. All you youngins out there with your P4s now, I'm sure that's what you call it. And what? your P4. I, I used to work at a GameStop, like too. PlayStation 4. <laughs> you mean a PS4? No, P4. Uh, I, when I was at GameStop, people would come in all the time. If they wanted a game for the PS3 and it was sports related, nine times out of ten, this was their sentence. Let me get that 2K joint for the P3. What? That was my reaction every time. <laughs> my, my last day, I actually corrected him and said, I'm sorry, we did 2K joint for the P3. Man, that system's not out yet. How do you have it? And the 2K joint isn't coming out for a couple more years. 
want to reserve it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> the dude got right. so cross Troll. with me. That's me. Yeah. No, I, 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 you know, to be fair, when I worked at Whataburger, I trolled some people. Like, they'd come in saying, can I get some jalapenos on that? And I'd be like, I'm sorry, we don't have any jalapenos, but you can have some jalapenos if you'd like. Nice. And don't get me started working at Target with the whole thing that happened in December. Mm, what this, happened? Uh, that whole credit card scare um. in the news. And so people will say, is it safe for me to swipe my credit card now? And I understand. Like, I'm trying to be sympathetic. They're nice people. I usually end up forming good friendships with them, blah, blah, blah. But eventually I was just like, yeah, we secured the leak. We used extra strong duct tape this time. <laughs> and if, if somebody tries to attack us again, you know, we send a counterstrike. We send an entire playlist, infinite, of Miley Cyrus songs. And it uses up so much of their memory that they can't even turn their computer <laughs> off for relief. And then I get Wrecking Ball stuck in my head and I blame the customer. I, I don't... I have no words. <laughs> I have no words. <laughs> wow. That's priceless. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's... You know what? That is a swan song if I have ever heard it. Um... So we'll leave you with these words of wisdom. Oh yes. Troll troll away makes the customers more enjoyable. Can you make the customer troll troll away makes the customers go away? No. No. My customers no. never get okay. crossed. They laugh right along with me because okay. they know I'm messing with okay. them. Man, I dealt with some of the most irate people at Wawa. Six o'clock in the morning. What do most people want? A cup of coffee. I'm at a gas station. Maybe they want some gas, a breakfast burrito. Someone is tugging on my cord. <laughs> yes, they want that too. Um, no, we sell cigarettes. Smoking is bad, children. <laughs> Getting upset. It's true. <laughs> Getting upset with your retailer because they do not carry your bizarre brand of cigarettes is even worse for your health. Six o'clock in the morning, this gentleman comes in. It's my first day working with Wawa. I am just now finding out that there is more cigarettes outside of Newport Camel than Marlboro's, what various family members used to smoke. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this guy comes in. Six o'clock in the morning. I cannot stress how important this is. Six o'clock in the morning, and all of a sudden, it's... I want a bag of Benson and Hengen's Premium Ultra Lux Menthol Deluxe Puffle Bag Soft 100 in the box. That same look is what I had. <laughs> and I just sat there. I was like, sir, can we, can we start with what color the box is? And then the brand. You said that? Yes. And he flipped out. I have never heard so many colorful words used in such a unique combination. Anyone on withdrawal. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he, he got his stuff. He was happy. Uh, my lesson was... Ask them anyway. If they get upset, well, then we can kick them out because they're being meanie pants. Mm. Hmm. Meanie pants. Meanie pants. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap this up for now. Okay. Um, I want to thank you all for coming out. Totes. Um, it was, this was very fun. Um, hopefully, even if um, maybe you all can't make it, maybe we'll have guests come in, um, uh, smack their nerd down. I'm working on getting some guests lined up. And, um, yeah, so maybe we can do it, like, once a week, that sort of thing. That, that'd be awesome. So That would be awesome. You know what we got to do? I got I have two TVs downstairs in my basement, and I've got an N64 and a Nintendo Wii, which plays the virtual console, eight-player Mario Kart 64. Ooh. All right. Yeah. I don't know. Have you seen, was it a uh, eight, the, the Rainbow Road? We all gonna die, y'all. <laughs> no, I didn't see that one. <laughs> oh no, it's like in space or something, and it's insane looking. Yeah, Spirits. not surprised. So, um, <laughs> thank y'all for listening. Um, thank you for coming to the podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we're gonna be on YouTube and iTunes, so please subscribe there. And uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next week. We love you. You're our best friends. <laughs>